Hey everyone, welcome back to another video on next generation sequencing data analysis. In the previous video, we used the IMGT, a web tool for um, alignment of immune cell repertoires. And in this video, I'm going to introduce you to another tool to also um, align your immune uh, sequencing data, immune cell sequencing data, such as uh, TCR sequences or immunoglobulin sequences. Um, the difference between this one and IMGT is that this one you actually download right onto your computer. If you remember with IMGT, we had to actually, you know, we had to upload our files. First, we had to convert the FASTQ file into FASTA, and then we had to wait for them to annotate or align our sequences and then download it. And this can take a long time because sometimes their servers are very busy, so you might be uh, you might be waiting a whole week or two. And this is, you know, this can be very annoying if you if you really just want to get your data back and, and, you know, continue analysis. So, Tools that have alignment algorithms and um, databases that you can use on your own machine are quite handy. And one of such tools is the actually recently published uh, MyXCR tool by uh, MI Laboratory. Um, they have several tools that we'll actually discuss in these videos, but today we're going to talk about um, following software MyXCR right here. So they themselves, you know, write down that it processes big immune uh, immunome data from raw sequences and to quantify it, um, clonotypes. So it does what IMGT did. We, you know, if you remember, we uploaded the FASTA file and we got back a file that had all of the data on, you know, this is the variable region, this is the joining region, and it had all these uh, all this information. So how do you download it? How do you install it? And how do you use it? These are the things that we're going to talk about in this video. Uh, let's go ahead and start by downloading the the uh, the software you could go um, down here to documentation um, and see how to uh, how to install it um, you can download it here as well however I'm just gonna tell you guys how it's the easiest the best way because sometimes when you do it like here in their documentation this is their the documentation for my XCR um, you know, they say here you can use it with Homebrew. This is a tool that you download on Linux or Mac OS and you can use a command to just download it. The thing is on some computers, on some machines, it just simply doesn't work once you downloaded it. You can't start the program and I don't know why. You could also download it directly from GitHub. Same thing happened for me. In some machines it works perfectly and in some it doesn't. The the universal way it worked for me to install this without problems um, is actually something they discuss in their you know, you can ask questions on their GitHub page and they answer quite uh, quite fast. So the fastest way is doing this. You can use wget, which is a t command for uh, that you can type in your terminal. I'm going to start up the terminal by pressing CTRL Alt T. Um, so you can you can just type this in wget and then copy and paste the, the link here from GitHub for the zip file, though. There you go. We're just going to copy this out put this in our terminal and this will download now as you can see it will download the file it's a zip file that is now wherever you were while you typed this uh, typed in this command which is for us I'll press ls to see what we have in our uh, in the folder we are in right now and we're just at in our home folder and there you have the zip file so you can unzip this now by just typing in unzip and now the name of the zip um, file I press tab because as you remember you know if there is nothing else that starts with my X and you just press tab it's gonna continue and f uh, fill out that that whole name so we unzip it and now we have if we press LS again we now have um, let's see there you go the my XCR folder right there so now if we go into that folder we can start my X. Oh, sorry, CD my XCR. So we change directory into there. Um, nope, my XCR. What am I typing wrong? Oh, yeah, CD my X. It's actually it has this name. Um, now in here we have executable an executable um, file which is a .jar right here. .jar is uh, is a Java file. You start with Java, but you can now run it by pressing dot slash my XCR. This will not start up a graphical user interface, which uh, this does not come with a graphical user interface. So you can see now the help file basically of my XCR. If you want to be able to run this program from from anywhere, you can just uh, so see if I if I type in here now my XCR, it's not going to work out because the the file isn't there. If you want files like that to be 
to, to work from wherever in your terminal, wherever you are, you can add it to the path variable. Uh, a variable in Unix, because we haven't discussed this, I think, in the previous videos, I'm just going to quickly explain. A variable is any string that you save a certain thing on. So, for instance, we can say that I want this, uh, this to mean or to, to be, you know, equal to, and we can just say uh, that, okay? If we press enter, now this, this will actually is, is now is a variable now that is that has that stored if you want to call the variable just to see what's inside you can type in echo and now a dollar sign which is uh, you know the sort of symbol that symbolizes that now this is a variable it will echo that so there are, there's a variable there are global variables that are already saved in when you start your terminal like path so in here you have several um, uh, um, f basically directories saved in the path variable and these are the directories that your computer this terminal will look for executable files like the .jar file when you type anything in so that's how when we say uh, when we start for example this the EA utils uh, um, tools you know if you remember fastq mcf this actually knows you know it actually starts that program it actually starts this tool fastq uh, MCF. It's because the MCF file is in is in one of these uh, one of these locations, probably in this bin folder right here. And then there, you can see several. So how do you add the myxr to that folder? You do it like this. You write in path is equal to, and then you write down the 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 path for um f f where the myxr folder is which is actually, let's type in ls to know the exact name of it. So path is equal to, we type in dollar sign capital letters home, which is uh, the, the, uh, the, the, in this variable, you have the, uh, the path for your home directory where the myxcr folder is, slash, now you type in the myxcr, you know, hyphen 181. And now you do something that you wouldn't usually do if you store a variable, you type in, um, this and go dollar sign path this means that it's gonna it's gonna extend it's gonna extend um this variable with what you have added so now if we call for path there you go our myxcr is on there and now wherever we are we can just type in myxcr and it's gonna start the program so this is uh, quite neat however it's gonna close um it's gonna once you shut down the um, the terminal, you have to redo this. In order to not have to redo this, we're just gonna quickly actually add it to your so that whenever you open your terminal, you can you can do that and uh, that you can do by editing um, following file. Okay, you can open up with uh, any text editor such as get it. Okay, you just type get it. This is a tool, uh, uh, basically text editor, and you open up following file. You write out we write down this slash dot bash rc and then you just add whatever we what we just wrote in the in the terminal here as well so you write path and make it equal to um the myxcr path which was this 1.8.1 and then you very important to add this bit so it doesn't overwrite your bash rc uh, you know uh, otherwise you will not not be able to use any of your of your tools again so this of course you can undo this but we, we just won't let it get there and you write this export path that's it then you save it here and it's it so now when you when you restart a terminal like this now you should be able to run my XCR from anywhere yeah there you go so now that we have done that let's start our first alignment so we go ahead and check the documentation, you know, always check the doc documentation. It's so, you know, it's so easy. So there's an easy way to align your samples now. We start a terminal. We go to wherever our fastq file is. So the easiest way to do this. Um, sorry. So we want to align our fastq file. We don't have to use the fasta. We don't have to convert for this. We type in myxcr align now we have we can use different options that i have here on the website so for example we can define the locus we know that we are, we have tcr beta um, sequences so we can say l 
and write TRB. Yeah, this is what it says right here. This is their option to choose. We can choose a low-key TRB. Something else we can choose is a species right there. So we can go S and type in the species. We can either type out Homo sapiens. This is the default value. They also have, you know, shorter versions like just HSA. Uh, and obviously you can choose different uh, species as well. And there are different other parameters that you can change. We'll just stick with the defaults for now and just type in now our first input file or, you know, we only have one input file. We'll just take our input file, which is called SR. And then let's see, uh, what was it again? SR, oh, there it says it. Uh, oops. Q10 dot fast Q. And then we provide it also with an output file that ends in dot VDJCA. So we just say SR Q10 dot VDJCA and type enter. So now you can see it's working. The alignment is being done. Uh, it's worked 0.6% of the alignment. It's going to take a little bit, but eventually it'll finish. And now if we try to look into this file, you know, we, we try to look into it like we learned in the previous videos using head. Oh, I typed in the fastq file. Obviously, I wanted to look at what we just created. The uh, Sorry, the VD. There we go, VDJCA. It looks weird. We can't read it. And that's because this is not, a, uh, the format is not human readable, they say. So what is the next step of this alignment? So once we align, the next thing that we do is we assemble the clones, okay? This is a very important part. So we do my XTR assemble. Now it's going to put things together for you. So that's the next step. And we just run my XCR assemble. That's the command, the different options that they have for assemble. We can just look through them, scroll down and it says you can uh, create a report file, you know, number of processes to use. So these are things we just stick with this. Uh, we just stick with the, def uh, with the default default. Go assemble um, and now give them the VDJCA file we just created. So that was SR Q10 VDJCA. And now we give another output file. So now this is going to be Q10. We'll just stick with this naming. And this one is going to be CLNS. Okay. Um, expected a command, got to assemble. I wrote assemble wrong for the second time. <laughs> assemble. There we go. Now, again, it's going to work through it. Done. Writing clones, 0%. No idea why, but I think it still worked out. Uh, again, though, this still is not human readable text. We'll see if everything worked out in the next step. Okay, so looking at clones, again, this doesn't work. What we have to do now is the next step right here. Export it. It says it right here. It will export your binary file to human readable text. Okay? That's what we need to do. So that's what we will do. My XCR export, actually not the alignments. Uh, we want to export the clone. You can obviously uh, export the alignments as well. Just for us is the interesting part for us, are actually the clones right now, because that those have the information. So again, you can choose the options and you can read up what the options do right here, but we'll stick with the, we'll stick with the, um, with the defaults for now and just type uh, down our uh, clone file. And the output file, Q10 aligned dot txt. You don't really have to do this, but you can. And now if we look into that file, you see all of the information right there. So we can obviously open this now with a sort of a Excel or any other spreadsheet file or text editor to just have a look into how this thing looks like. And we have it right there. Okay. Open this up. There you go. So uh, it didn't find many clones actually in this, in this specific uh, alignment, in this specific, um, for this specific uh, file. And, you know, it's, if you remember with IMGT, we had so many different lines and that's because um, in that file you had, for example, this one here, it makes up almost 80% of the entire repertoire, right? So this thing is 17,000 times. And uh, that means that 